In this video, I want to prove a proposition of congruence geometry, which we are going to call betweenness preservation. So we defined what a congruence geometry was previously. A congruence geometry is an ordered geometry that satisfies the six axioms of congruence given by Hilbert here. Um, and the betweenness preservation uh, theorem here is going to essentially solidify the connection between congruence and betweenness. Uh, betweenness comes from this notion of an order to geometry and congruence, then we add it on top of that. And congruence and betweenness are actually closely related to each other. Now, when we talked about the axioms of segment congruence, the only axiom that specifically talked about betweenness was segment addition. So it's going to come as no surprise that segment addition is going to be the main ingredient in this proof here. But what is the statement here? Imagine that we have uh, a segment AC that's congruent to another segment A prime C prime, such that the point B is, sits in between A and C. So then between this preservation is gonna guarantee that there exists some point, a unique point B prime, that's between A prime and C prime, such that AB is congruent to A prime B prime and BC is congruent to B, uh, B prime C prime. So in picture, we're thinking of the following situation. We have this, we have this segment, uh, which has of course three points on it. So we're gonna have A, B, and C. We then have this other line segment, maybe down here or something like this, uh, for which we then have A prime and C prime on it. And the idea is that this line segment right here is going to be congruent to this line segment right here. So then the those are the assumptions here. So what the preservation theorem is going to give us is that there's some third there's some third point b prime over here so that these segments are congruent and the, these segments are congruent so we're going to show how to do exactly that right here so the first thing is we're going to use segment translation to get us this so this is axiom c1 we're going to use segment translation to get the point b prime into the game here because after all we could think of the ray the ray that's determined by the points a prime C prime on that ray by segment translation there is going to be some point B prime so that a B is congruent to a prime B prime okay so that's really what we want to do here is we can translate this segment down over here and so we get some we get some point B prime like so so by construction of the point B prime we're gonna have that a B is congruent to a prime B prime now, I have to be a little bit careful, and this is always something we should be cautious about when we draw diagrams here. How do I know that B prime is between A prime and C prime? I actually don't know that yet. So we have to be very, very careful. I'm gonna draw my picture in that manner, but I cannot assume yet that I know B prime uh, is between A prime and C prime. I know that B prime is on the ray, A prime, C prime, but it could be over here. Maybe it's equal to C prime for all we know. We don't know that yet. Okay, so we got we use segment translation once. We're actually going to use it a second time here. Uh, so what we're going to do next is that again using segment translation, there's going to be a point P such that BC is congruent to B prime P, and so we then will know that B prime is going to be between A and P. So this is this is the little trick that we're going to try to do here as we look at this segment. I'm going to again draw the ray back on the screen so because we don't know where all these live necessarily but the idea is we're going to take the segment bc now and translate it down over here so there, there's some point p that lives over here p could be you know past c prime maybe it's between b prime and c prime maybe it's c prime itself uh, i mean that's what's going to happen we don't know that yet but by translation this time we know that bc is going to be congruent to this one right here, B prime P. And we do know by construction that B prime will be between A prime and P. So we translate twice. We translate this one down, we translate this one down. Um, and so we have to then determine how does C prime play into all of this. That's really what matters here. So now this is where segment addition is going to come into play here. So by what we know, A prime is congruent to excuse me a b is congruent to a prime b prime we also know that b c is congruent to b prime p so by segment addition since these two pieces uh, those two pieces add up to be 
C prime. Let me put uh, put C. Let's put still C on the board there. Um, so we know that this is congruent to that. We know this is congruent to that. So their unions must be congruent as well. So we're going to get that AC is congruent to A prime P, like so. But I should also mention that we already know by assumption that AC is congruent to A prime C prime, like so. So by transitivity of segment congruence, we have to have that A prime P is congruent to A prime C prime, like so. And then we're going to come back to segment translation here. We have two segments on the exact same ray. Um, both of these segments start at A prime. We have a congruence between two segments on the same ray. By the uniqueness condition of segment translation, it's got to happen that C prime and P are actually the same point, like so. So really, we could just remove this, one, this point from consideration here, and C prime is the one we are looking for. Okay, so therefore AB is congruent to A prime B prime by construction. We're going to have that BC is congruent to B prime C prime because P and C prime are the same thing. And then B prime is going to be between A prime and C prime because again, P is C prime, thus proving the betweenness, uh, the betweenness preservation theorem here. So this is a very important thing that if we have two congruent segments, we can preserve the betweenness relationship from one segment onto the other. And that's going to be a very, very useful skill. Now, from that, we can actually define what it means for, um, to, well, we can define an ordering on segments. So for segments A, B, and C, D, if there exists some point E that is between C and D, then we say that, uh, and, and A, B is congruent to C, E, then we say that A, B is less than C, D. And so the idea, of course, is the following. We have our two segments, something like this. So we have A, we have B, we have C, we have D, right? And so then the thought is, if I translate segment A, B onto the segment C, D, such that, because I should say you translate onto the ray C, D, then there's going to be some point E over here, right? Where does E live? Is E between C and D? If so, we say that AB is less than CD. Um, what if it's what if E is equal to D itself? Well, then, then you'd get congruent in that situation. Um, what if it's past the point though, where D is between it? Then you get it's greater than, right? But those those observations are going to have to be um, proven. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this up to a, a exercise to the viewer here. So if E is between C and D, we say the segment AB is less than CD. And then we can say that AB is less than or equal to CD if either they're congruent as segments or um, uh, that one's actually backwards right there. Sorry about that. Uh, AB would be less than CD. Not sure how that thing got twisted around. But yeah, less than or equal to has the usual interpretation that you're either congruent or less than. So it's not equal, it's not less than or equal to, it should be really le less than or congruent to, but we'll still just use the less than or equal to symbol here. Um, I, like I said, I'm gonna leave this as an exercise to the viewer here to prove that in fact, um, this, this uh, relationship we've defined is in fact a total order. Um, if you look, of course, at this one, less than or equal to here, um, it should be a reflexive. That is, um, your AB is congruent to that is, AB would be less than or equal to AB. Well, since congruence is reflexive, that's pretty easy there. Is it anti-symmetric if AB um, is less than or equal to CD and CD is less than or equal to AB, that they're actually congruent? Um, that There's something that has to be proven there. Is it transitive? Well, we know that congruence is transitive, but is this is this definition transitive? Um, you can prove that. There's some details there. Is it totally ordered? Uh, yeah, the trichotomy in between this preservation is going to be coming to play into all these. So again, I'm going to leave it as an exercise to the viewer to prove this, but this is something we're going to use in future videos that when we discuss segments, we can then put a total order on segments based upon how they relate to each other with regard to congruence and betweenness.